My question is to the Prime Minister. One month before the election, the now Prime Minister promised he would deliver on reducing cost of living pressures for Australian families because he had a plan. Because of Labor's policies, interest rates are rising higher than they otherwise would, and Australian families are paying an extra $18,000 a year on a typical mortgage. The Prime Minister is failing Australians because he doesn't have a plan. Why do Australian families always pay more under Labor? Order. Members of my right, the Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Well, the Governor of the Reserve Bank has made a number of appearances this week. And one of the things that he has said is that our policies are taking pressure off inflation. Yeah, right. He's indicated Order. that monetary policy is working hand in hand right. with fiscal really policy. With fiscal policy. That is what he has said. And indeed, uh, what we're seeing is uh, the measures that we've put in place making Senator a difference. Uh, this is what the origin uh, statement to the Australian Stock Exchange declared today. Uh, we, the announcement in December 2022 by the federal government of price caps on gas and coal is in response to global and domestic the shocks. Of the but more recently, we have seen prices decline. Now, that is what that is what Origin have said. Um, Dr. Stephen Kennedy uh, of the Treasury, who has served both both the former government and the current government with distinction, uh, the said this following the December announcement: national electricity market future prices have declined significantly. Lower futures prices will be reflected in the default market offer announced by the regulator around the middle of the year. Over the year to June 2024, Treasury expects the coal and gas caps to reduce inflation by half a point. That's what they had to say. But not everyone, not everyone supports. The Prime Minister was talking about mortgages and the cost of living and inflation pressures. Just remind the House, which was about the question. And I'll call the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. A point of order on tedious repetition, Mr. Oh, Speaker. Resume your, seat. resume your seat immediately. Call the Leader of the House. We're very nimble. Call the Leader of the House. Uh, thanks, Speaker. Uh, as the questioner should know, having been here for a long time, uh, that standing order applies to debate. If it applied to questions, none of her questions would be in order. <laughs> Order. It was a relevant point of order, just. But I just want to remind the House, if the Prime Minister or any other minister is addressing the House and is being directly relevant and an abuse of standing orders occurs, there will be consequences. Give the call to the Prime Minister. Thanks very much, uh, uh, much Mr Speaker. Uh, but those opposite oppose every action in which we put forward to try to reduce inflationary pressure and to deal with the challenges which arise from at a time when uh, we have acknowledged the struggle uh, that is going on uh, of the, the people of Ukraine. The Ukrainian war, unfortunately, the actions of Russia are having an impact on global energy prices. They're feeding into inflation globally. Uh, that's just a fact. Uh, but those opposite oppose price caps. They oppose the safeguard mechanism legislation. They oppose the Housing Australia Future Fund. They oppose the National Reconstruction Fund. They oppose us increasing the wages for the lowest paid workers in Australia. What is it? What is it about the last election where they didn't get the memo? People are over conflict fatigue. People want to look for for Fairfax. solutions for Fairfax. And, and, a, and a positive agenda. And all Fairfax those opposite have, having created the problems, they now stand the in the way Barker. of all of the solutions. 